Hello, ladies, and welcome back to the Girl Power Alliance podcast. I'm your host, Molly Trotter Gomez, and I am going to be interviewing the founder, Michelle Schaefer. We have a very special story for you today. I've been saying, Michelle, we have to get this part of your story out there for the world to hear because there's so many facets to Michelle, and you guys have heard her talk, you've heard her story, but this particular part, I don't believe you have, and it's the success that she's been able to achieve being a God-fearing woman and just really being able to have God at the center for everything that she does, really being able to breathe in hope to the women that are out there that when you keep pressing through, God has so much for you. So Michelle, I'm really excited to have you here and to be able to chat with you and just dive in a little bit deeper. So I would love for you to kind of give the ones that are listening that may have not heard your story a little bit of a refresher because there's so many dynamics to it. No, oh, yes. Well, we could do 20 podcasts, depending on which decade we want to go into at this point. <laughs> Thank you. I'm excited to do this podcast with you. And for those of you that, I don't know, maybe you followed me before GPA and you followed me with the sold out entrepreneur podcast. So, you know, a little bit about my story, but for those that don't, um, I, my Instagram handle is teen mom to millionaire. And I was a teen mom. I had my first child when I was 16 years old. She is going to be 32 in April. I can't believe it. Literally Molly could be my child because they're the same age. <laughs> that makes me feel so old. Um, and I had my second child, my son, when I was 19, divorced with two kids by the time I was 21. So, you know, kind of starting myself off at a disadvantage or what the world would think was a disadvantage. And I really never wanted my kids to um, suffer because of the fact that I was a young mom. So I was very ambitious. The first part of my career, I stood behind the chair as a stylist and a makeup artist. I worked really hard. I mean, I worked crazy hours and built that into a six figure a year income. I think my, my best year was like 132,000. Um, but I like, I talk about working for that. I worked for that. I worked crazy hours. I have literally like entire school years with my older two kids that I have no memory of. I don't have any memories with them because it was just crazy. Um, I met my husband who I have been with now for this year. We'll have our 20 year wedding anniversary. We'll be together for 22 years this year. I met him on a blind date and he was in the network marketing profession, which I had heard about. I had heard about network marketing, but I never knew anybody successful. I just heard stories. I'm sure you've heard the stories too, Molly. Like we hear the stories yeah. and I always make a joke. Like my sister's cousin's neighbor's friend is making X amount of money, right? But it's like, it was never them. So to me, that profession was kind of smoke and mirrors. I didn't know anything about it. Smoke and mirrors when it comes to what they made, not that the products weren't real or anything, but what people could make. And um, to really just give a synopsis, we met on a blind date. We've literally been together ever since. Um, a couple of years into our marriage, I felt a, not a nudge, but a desperate, desperate pull to be home. Like I really wanted to be home with my kids. I had a freshman in high school, a middle schooler and a toddler. And I was like, they're going to grow up and move out. And we will not have known each other. Bobby owned a mortgage company at the time. We were all just very split apart. And uh, so I jumped into the network marketing profession with Bobby's blessing. He's like, this is a super old company. The comp plan stinks, but Hey, go for it. Um, that, but it had momentum. And so I jumped in with Bobby's help within six months, I retired from the career. It took me almost 10 years to build behind the chair. And within nine months I had replaced my income, my six figure year income. And I was like, oh my gosh, what is this profession? I always knew as a stylist, like I, you know, we, we do this. I have an appointment with my hairstylist coming up here. Like we love to go in because we feel like maybe ick. And then we leave and we feel amazing. And I loved having that impact on women's lives. But I, there was something in me that really wanted to have a, like a deeper impact, impact their lives more. And when I jumped into network marketing, I was like, wow, like this is, this is way more impact on their lives to be able to help them financially or to get back time if they could do what I did. And so we spent a couple of years at that company, uh, made it to the top 2%. We, we always worked together, even though that wasn't the intention in the beginning, we just we formed a great partnership, Bobby and I, and he mentored me for many, many years in the profession. I was like, Hey, I'm going to do this. What do you think? I mean, he had so much, well, he, let me tell you this. I didn't say this part. When I met Bobby, when we were dating, he was the number two guy in a network marketing company at the time. And he was making $80,000 a month. I did not know that. 
<laughs> that may have shifted how I would have acted when we were dating if uh, I had known. Like, <laughs> I may have, I don't know. I may have, I don't know. Who knows what I would have, but I didn't know that at the time. Um, so I got to see the, the success side that everybody talked about, like you hear about. I got to actually see it because here I was dating this guy who had this totally different lifestyle than me. And so that I had belief in the profession before I ever stepped foot in it, because I had this guy, he was my guru. He was my, he was, here he was, I had this resource in my home. So I leaned on him for everything that I learned about that profession. Um, as the story goes, uh, we moved to another company a couple of years later, made it to the top 10 of that company together. Um, Bobby got invited. He got asked, the company was transitioning and kind of rebranding. And they asked him if he would, they, in, they basically offered him the job as the VP of sales. And uh, that he did that from home before people were working at home. We were so forward thinking, <laughs> um, but it, we didn't have all the tools. And so he, they wanted him to move to Florida to, to take on this job. And they kind of got me in default by default. So he was the VP of sales. I was the director of marketing. We moved across the country for this job long, that was, that's another whole podcast, but that really fell apart. They literally stopped paying us. I mean, it was just a nightmare. And I remember laying in bed, we were in Florida on the, in this beautiful place. We lived on Siesta key. It like today to where we were, it was a dream, but it was a total nightmare. We were away from everybody we knew and loved and we weren't getting paid. And it was just this crazy thing. And I remember laying in bed saying to God, like, I know you didn't bring us here for this. So either open a door or fix it quick. <laughs> I was like, this is not why you took us away from everybody and everything. Anyway, the result of that was we started our own company in at the end of 20, 2009, beginning of 2010, we were like, okay, we're doing it. We have this experience, we've had success. And we started our own network marketing company with investors. And for two and a half years, we literally poured everything we had into that financially, physically, mentally, emotionally, intellectually. And um, at our board, at a board meeting, two and a half years in, um, we had flown to Utah for the board meeting with us and the investors, and they kicked us out of the company that we had built. Now it was a, still a small company. There was only a couple thousand people there, um, but we had an amazing culture. I always say this on the bottom of every bottle and box we had Isaiah, Isaiah 43, verse 18 and 19. And that was like, God, he doubt, he, he like painted this, tattooed this on my heart and mind, you know, forget the, forget I'm doing a new thing. Forget the former things. I'm doing a new thing. Don't you see it? I'm making a way in the wasteland and streams in the desert. And when that happened, when we got kicked out, it was probably one of the most devastating things I'd ever been through ever because of the fact that I felt like I had like arrived here. I was this teen mom, one semester of college felt always like I self-imposed maybe, but always felt like I had this like cloud over me, this thing, the, this thing that you're a loser, you were a teen mom, you're never going to make anything. And here I was the co-founder and president of this company that was ours. Like I helped formulate the products and it was gone. And I had told we obviously you tell everybody about what you're doing. Yeah. And, um, then in an instant, it was gone, The everything was gone. And because of where we had come from selling everything to move across the country, not getting paid and then investing in this company, like we didn't have this reserve. <laughs> it was like, when we got kicked out of the company, we literally got kicked out and there's more to the story, but we opted to not litigate. We just, we knew somebody that was in litigation with those people for doing kind of the same thing. And they had been in litigation for over two years and there was still nothing happening. And we just decided, you know what, we can either go that route and join into this lawsuit with this other person that they had done the same thing to, or we can move forward. And we just opted to move forward. And, um, I had a very, like a shred of hope, uh, for the network marketing profession at that point, because I felt very disillusioned by all the things and, we jumped into a network marketing company where Bobby knew the owners. He had known them for probably at that point, like 12 or 13, maybe, maybe 13 years. He was friends with them. And I just said, you know, this is my last shot. Like if it doesn't happen, then I know that this is not the path and I'll just go back and I'll do hair. Or we'll come up with another business or something. Um, well that at that point, 
we had built together, Bobby and I had built two network marketing businesses from scratch to six figures or multiple six figures a year. Okay. So I knew that we could do it, but with all the things that had happened, I was like, I don't know if it's going to happen again. Right. Um, so this was in 2012 and we just gave it all we had because it was all we had and we were hungry and we had bills to pay and a family to feed. And within nine months, we were back at a six figure a year income. Um, within two and a half years, we had earned um, seven figures and have have up, you know, till now, um, multiple seven figures um, in, in that particular opportunity. And um, so when that happened, when we accumulated in that company, a million dollars of earnings all the way back to where I started, I changed my handle on Instagram to teen mom to millionaire, because I felt, um, this thing, this identity that I had attached to myself that was so negative. It was like, I don't know, kind of an overcoming moment for me. Like I was a teen mom, but guess what? I, I did this. I, you know, together with Bobby, I don't say, I say, I, I mean, we, every time I say, I, um, you know, was able to accomplish this thing that outwardly to all of us in business, like to earn seven figures, it's kind of like this pinnacle thing, right? So anyway, long, long story there, but that's kind of the synopsis. Yeah. Well, what's good is there's so many places that we can press into. And what I want to point out, number one is obviously you had a lot of points where there were roadblocks, quote unquote, set up that people would stop for that or far less, right? But you kept pushing through, you kept pushing through and you kept pushing through. And, you know, I've had the opportunity to meet two of your three children and they're amazing. And, you know, I know they're proud of you today as far as what you've been able to accomplish, because you could have stopped at having babies at a young age. You could have stopped at like, okay, we're going to stay at the chair, six figures, a lot of hairstylists, hairstylists, women, men, all of them would love to be able to hit six figures, but you kept kind of, you know, peeking into the door of this network marketing industry. And that's where I really want to guide this next question. There were a lot of hiccups in that. There's a lot of PTSD for people. People hear MLM, uh, network marketing, ugh, like, oh my gosh. But there's really beautiful things about it. And one thing that you say that's so beautiful is that you say, I look around in my home and everything in here is because of network marketing. Because you didn't give up no matter how people treated you, how they ripped things out from under you and just how people were just being people because we're a fallen world. I'd love for you to talk about that because you kept pushing through. What were some of those key things that are like, you know what? I got burned here, but I'm going to go back. I got burned here that I'm going to go back. What was that? Because I feel like people really need to hear that today. It's crazy. And I'm, it's not, it's not like anecdotal. When I say that I look around and everything in my home, including my home is a direct result is because of the money that we earned in network marketing. It's not a lie because when we started with that company, we had nothing. We didn't own a home. We had literally, when we moved across the country, we sold almost everything we owned legitimately so that we could move across the country. And we had a couple things in storage that we didn't want to take with us. So when we came back to California and started that other company, we were putting money into the company. We still didn't have money to accumulate. Like for, we didn't even have, it's like really funny. We moved it into Bobby's parents' home because they were letting us rent it while they, they bought another home. And so we used some of their furniture that they didn't want to take with them. I mean, literally that's, that's where we were back at zero again. And so when, when we bought this home, er, like we were, everything was new. We refurnished all the old things that we had. Um, you know, we had bought things before we bought this home, but everything in here, it's a legitimate thing. And I think that's important for people because, um, oftentimes in network marketing, you hear about people that make all this money, but then whatever, they don't know how to manage money or the company, whatever. And then they have nothing to show for it in the end. Like they have nothing to show. I know people that have made millions in network marketing and they have nothing. They're living in apartments. They're, they have nothing to show for it. So it's a very much a testimony, in my opinion, to like the reality of, of what's possible in network marketing. Um, but I think the thing that kept me personally coming back was, was the foundational idea of, of what it could be if it was done right. When I was a hairdresser, um, my, there was no social media. I mean, we didn't have smartphones or nothing. I, I, my whole business was built from word of mouth mar marketing, the whole thing. Like, you, you know, it kind of keeps you on your toes. You want to make sure you have happy clients ha because when they leave, first of all, you want them happy. Second of all, you want them to look great because people will say, oh my gosh, I love your hair. Where do you get your hair done? And so, um, matter of fact, when I was just starting out, I came 
like I put myself through school working in the restaurant business. So I knew everybody in, in my town. I knew all the bartenders and everybody. And so I chose like people that worked at busy restaurants. And I said, I'll do your hair for free. If you hand out my cards, that's a word of mouth marketing, knowing if I could make them look great and they're around hundreds of people a week, right. Then the word would get out. So I already understood the concept of being of your best customer being your best marketing about the profession of network marketing. But again, that's kind of only a one-off. Like you're still, even there, when I was standing behind the chair, I had kind of maxed out. I was, uh, you know, charging as much as I could charge at that time for my market. And I was working, there were no more hours I could work. I mean, unless I literally was working 24 hours a day, I couldn't expand on my income. I couldn't grow it. I had assistance in that. And I even, um, I, I was thinking about opening a salon, but when I actually sat down and did the math, I was like, really, there's not, unless I open a massive salon, which I didn't have the money for, there's really no way for me to actually increase my income. So I was always like, how can, what's next? How can I continue to move forward? How can I keep growing? And it wasn't possible in that profession. So I see the success that Bobby's having in the profession and his lifestyle. So now, mind you, when we met, I was working 50, 60 hours a week in the salon, single mom, right? No time for anything. And here's this guy, he's 32. Was he 32? I think he was 33. He was 32 when we met, he was 33. He had his big old cell phone. It wasn't a brick phone, but it was a giant cell phone. And he was on the cell phone kind of a lot. And um, I went with him to a couple of his meetings, but he just had, like, he'd call me at the salon at 10 because he just woke up. He's like, oh, I'm about to go to the gym. And I, I just was like, what, what is this lifestyle? It was so different than anything I'd ever seen. Even not, not even like even people that I knew that made money, they still had to work a lot of hours for that money. And here you had this guy who he was making stupid money and he had so much time and it was the time. So, so people, it's not the, it's amazing that there's so much money available to you, but it's the time that has way more value than the money because you could have a bunch of money in no time you know, and it, you could have all the time in the world and no money. <laughs> That's not fun either. Right. And he had, he had both. So the idea of what was potential and possible in the profession of network marketing, I think kept me coming back. And Bobby has always said this about this profession. He says, it's the cocaine of free enterprise because <laughs> And, and that's probably very negative, like a bad thing. I mean, I'm sorry if you have some, I have addicts in my family. I don't say that lightly, but his, his point being like, once you've kind of experienced that, you just keep coming back for it. Um, because, and you and I've talked a lot about leverage, Molly, I have lived a leveraged life for almost two decades. And, and when I say that, I mean, I have had total freedom over my time and I've had the money to be able to do with that time what I wanted. I have leveraged because this semi-passive, you know, the semi-passive um, residual type income that keeps coming in when and if you can build a network of happy customers that keep buying that product over and over. So I think that's why th that's the sole reason that I, that I kept coming back. Um, just kind of this belief that like, if you could get it right, because we were, there were pieces, right at other places. Some had great product, man, the product was so good. My product, when the skincare line that we developed, that I developed with the formulator was, I mean, I still get people that say that was the best skincare I ever used. So who knows, maybe someday down the road, we'll do that again. But so you had great product or maybe you had, you know, maybe your product was good, but not great, but you had an amazing way that people got compensated but other pieces weren't there. Or maybe you had an amazing owner and the culture was amazing, but the products weren't great or the, comp the compensation wasn't great. So I'd experienced like great in a multitude of areas. And I always just had this belief that like, what if you could put it all together, you know, then it, it could really work. And that's kind of like corporately from the inside out. And then you have people, like it's a people business and we're flawed as people. So there's a lot there's a lot of stuff that happens in the relationship, leadership and all of that. But, but the hope of what it could be is what always kept me coming back. Yeah, that's so good. And, you know, even from that, and obviously, like you said, you've got like several glimpses of like, why would I go anywhere else? Like, this is great. This is great. This is great. Which always outweighed clearly 
the things that weren't so great. You're like, you know what? There's going to be good and bad and everything, but there's so much good over here and the bad, you know, that's going to happen. We get to just work through that. I want to really press in on the success. You and your husband have been able to make multiple seven figures in this profession. Now, when people come out and they talk about money, there's a lot of people that, you know, make, I am, well, when I say a lot, you guys know what I mean. People that make multiple seven figures, right? But when you look at the type of person that they are, maybe the integrity that they bring, how they flash everything around, we get this kind of like, oh, they're kind of cocky and they're, they're showing off what they've done. From knowing you and Bobby, you guys don't do that at all. You guys are very humble people. You're people of integrity. And that's where I really want the meat of this interview to go is for women to really listen and for you to share and focus on that because sharing our success, especially when you get to that, you know, like you said, the pinnacle, that level of seven plus figures, you know, the, the, the crowd gets smaller, right? It's really big from zero to six figures. And then it's smaller when you hit seven, smaller when you hit eight, so on and so forth. But I want to talk about the fact of, you know, the person that you became money only magnifies who you are. And I really want to focus on just, you know, what was that like for you when you hit that seven figures, you know, what shifted, what changed, or, or really did anything change? And it was just money that came in because a lot of people put money as an idol. Let's just be honest. They have that as an idol. They have that as possibly the lordship over their life. I'll be honest. I know that happened to me for a number of years. And I was like, Lord, I want to just lay that at your feet because, you know, whatever circumstances it was, it's like, oh, I need more money, more money, more money. But really I just needed to be in God's presence. But back to your success and what it is that you guys have had, I really want to focus on like, what was that? What was that for you when you hit into that seven figure realm? Because a lot of people have one idea of like, oh, you become this person of, you know, you want the things and the this and the that rather than, you know, there's, there's a lot that comes to it. So I would love to hear what yours is specifically, because again, I hope people are listening to this. You are a person of integrity. If you don't know Michelle, go follow her stuff. If you like have not listened to any of her podcasts, go do it because at the end of the day, this is a really great example to show a woman of faith what she's been able to achieve by having God as the center of everything. And now, yes, I would love to hear what was that, you know, that, that pivotal moment for you. It was many, many moments. So, you know, kind of, I gave little like screenshots of kind of the story, but going from being a, a single mom and some months, not even knowing how I was going to actually pay for the rent with my kids to building this business behind the chair and having plenty of money. Um, I, I, the, the value of money was like hard earned. So I was never really frivolous with money in the first place. Um, but when I had it, I didn't hold on to it. I was like, it felt like such a, <clears throat> excuse me. It felt like such a blessing to me. Um, and I always have kind of had a, I've always had a generous heart. So it's like, if I, if I'm successful, I want to share that with other people. So I never had a thing. And, and even from childhood, I, I like, I never, I, I certainly don't worship money, but I will tell you that life is different and easier when you have money, because uh, there was a, there was one moment. Okay. Um, when we, uh, so we had lost our company and we started with this network marketing company started from zero, no advantages. Those of you that know network marketing know some people get advantages. These are like the, this is like the, the little black book of network marketing that I'm going to write one day. All the things that people don't know that go on behind the scenes. We had literally started at zero with no advantage and um, like almost a disadvantage because we had been in the profession for so long that we had prospected or tried to, you know, recruit people into a couple of different things. Our company that we started and, you know, before that, the company we were with. So they call it the NFL, no friends left. Like everybody knew that that's what we did. It's what we did for years. So we, we started with this, uh, the last network marketing company that we were with. And um, we started to make money. It took about six months. And really probably by like month four, I was like, it's not going to happen. What are we going to do? And then, you know, we stuck it out and it, and it, st it started to happen. And uh, we had our first, um, $10,000 month, $10,000 plus month. And so what do you do first? Like you're paying off some bills, you're buying things that you really needed because you couldn't afford it. And, um, and then the next month was my highest month at that point in the profession. I'll never forget this. It was a $12,000 month. I'd never made $12,000 a month in network marketing. I got close, but it was a $12,000 month. And it felt very surreal. Cause I was like, wow. I mean, after all we'd been through to get, to get to that number, what felt remarkable. And we had in the same week, our car broke down and Bobby's computer died. 
literally in the same week. Now, six months prior, that would have destroyed us because we wouldn't have had any money to get the car fixed, A, or B, go buy a brand new computer. And something else happened. There was like, there was three things that week. It was a cell phone. Um, it was a cell phone, a car, and a computer in the same week. And, um, you know, like I said, prior, you know, six months prior that we would have been, that, that we would have gone under, that would have destroyed us. But guess what? Because we had income coming in, none of those things were problems. It was like, oh, okay, well, let's take the car, get a rental. Um, he, he went and bought a computer that day and we replaced the phone, literally all in the same day. And that was a real pivotal moment for me personally to show that it has nothing to do with um, the love of money, but it has to do with the power that finances can actually take something that as a single mom, I prayed to God that my kids ever had a real big dental issue or like I didn't break a bone because it would have financially destroyed us, which would have, what do you do if you can't pay the bills? But when the income is there and these things that seemingly seem like problems happen, they are not problems. And so that just fortified my belief in the fact that, you know, God wants finances and resources in the hands of people who are going to steward it properly. You've heard me talk about this a ton lordship. You mentioned the word, we talk about it in depth in the radiant leadership Academy, but really money is a tool. It has no emotion. It, it doesn't, it doesn't feel anything. It's a tool that we can use. And when used properly, it can be the, one of the most powerful things on the planet to actually help uh, and help build the kingdom and help other people. And as the income just continued to grow, it was, I felt a, a humility that I had never experienced in my life. And our biggest month ever, it was like $53,000. And I, I remember in that, and we were making so much money up to that point. That was the biggest month, but we were making, you know, 30 plus thousand dollars and 40. I mean, it was like in a month. And I remember one time my son, who at the time, uh, he told me what he made in a year. And I started to weep because we were making more than that every month. And I thought, who are we? Who are we? Like, wow. we're just these regular people that like wake up in the morning, we go to the gym, we have bad breath. Like we're just normal. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and to have that and the humility and the gratefulness, I mean, I can't explain it to you. And it, and it almost did for me the opposite of what happens to some people. Like you said, some people, they want to like, look at my car, look at my stuff, because the world has told us that is how you attract people. You attract people by showing them your stuff, right? But I became almost, I don't know, like almost embarrassed. Like I didn't want to show this stuff because I felt so unbelievably, oh, like we had been so overly abundantly blessed that it felt to me like I was like putting in people's faces or something. So it even, even less, like I, I did less on social media. I did less with like lifestyle, whatever, you know, the lifestyle entrepreneurs. I did less because I felt like I'm, I'm no different than any of these other people. Like I'm just a, I'm just a person. I worked hard. I, you know, but I'm not an actual doesn't money doesn't make you a better person. Right. And I feel that that is something that, especially in network marketing happens. People think that the top earners are the best people. And that is often the opposite of the truth. And I just really wanted to be known for who I was, not what I made. Mm -hmm. That's good. And I think you've done a really great job of that. And all of that was said so beautifully because at the end of the day, totally understandable why you're like, I don't want to go out there and share a whole lot of things. I don't think I want, I don't want people to think I'm in their face. But there is that I've had this conversation with so many people, so many women specifically that have made multiple seven plus figures. And they're like, I just don't know how to share it. I'm a little, you know, you're protecting other people's feelings because you don't know how they're going to react when they see those things. And at the end of the day, it's like, you know what? I know Michelle's heart. I know how beautiful person she is. She is very humble, her and her husband to do anything for anyone. But I'm like, you know what? This is going to be so powerful being able to share these aspects of the success you've had because there's women listening to this being like, you know what? I know it's possible and I've, I've seen this vision. I've seen this dream. I just don't know what to do or I don't know who to follow. I don't know like who's out there that actually like aligns with me and aligns with God and truly has him at the center. Because at the end of the day, yes, mon money is definitely have gotten a hold of people's heart posture and has, you know, twisted things, right? 
Um, I remember when I was so focused on Lenny that God had to humble me so many times in a row. I was like, I don't even think I have legs left. He just kept hitting me at the knees, hitting me at the knees, hitting me at the knees to the point where it's like, you know, with whatever, the, everything that you're saying, my husband and I see that too, where we've seen so much of an abundance. And instead of us going out and let's go buy this and that, that, that we're like, you know what? Let's actually put this here. Let's hold off there. Let's give over there. Like our heart posture is so different. And we didn't necessarily see that around us, but we're like, Lord, where do you want us with this? Because I know moving forward, especially with Girl Power Alliance and everything that's growing there, like there's going to be so much abundance and you, myself, Ferris, we're all like, how can we give more to these women in our community and to people around us and be able to bless other people? And that is super exciting. Sure. Do we want to have nice things and live a fun life and enjoy it while we're here? Absolutely. Right. But at the end of the day, ladies, why, why we're doing this episode is to show you what's possible. And when you have the right people making great money, everybody gets to win because Michelle's such a great, um, just great example of like, you know what, I want to be able to give to other people. You've always had that inside of you. Money's just magnifying that. So what kind of message would you give to the women that are listening to this? And they may be thinking like, I don't know if I can do it. I hear that Michelle can, but what about me? It's I'm thank you for asking that because I, um, and we just had a, one of our coaching calls inside GPA last night. And I, I listened to the comments of the women. And one of the things that you hear all the time is, oh, they're so relatable. I think people think I'm not relatable anymore. Um, mm. and, and it kind of makes me sad, but it's like, I don't want to keep, you know, we, we move forward in life. Like I, I share a lot of the things, but I don't want to just keep on repeat the, the worst moments all the time because I have moved on. And so what I want to say to, to anybody listening is the statement that I heard that has stuck with me. If it's possible in the world, it's possible for me. It's just a matter of how I have never believed ever that something was impossible ever because I, you know, you, you read in the word of God, you, you, we know the stories, miraculous things. Have I ever seen the sea parted? No, but I know it's possible because, because God says it's possible. He actually says nothing is impossible. He says that. With me, nothing is impossible. With man, no. But with me, nothing is impossible. And so I always have had this um, thing in my heart, like if God put it in there, there is a reason for it. And I would not have had the same attitude and probably Bobby as well. And when we were younger about how we handled the success that we have had in the last couple of, you know, 10 years because I was a different person, but when you lose everything, you have, you take on this different attitude about money. And when you make God the center of your whole life, you understand that he's up here. He he's at the top of everything, your, your job, your business, your, your, who you think you are, all these things. And so, you know, I definitely wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been the same person. I probably would have been like so many other people. I probably would have just been like everybody else that I saw, you know, all the other people that I saw. And I, I like to say this clout is not character. So just because somebody is making a lot of money and they're very open about how much money they make and they're in whatever profession, network marketing, coaching, all these things that people that are really trying to build an income, they are magnetized to those people because they think they have what I want. I need to do what they do. And to some extent, there is truth to listening to people that have forged a path and following some of the steps to skip the line for yourself. So to some, that is true, but also it does not, money does not make you, money doesn't give you character. M money, you said it, money makes you more of what you already are. If the character, if your integrity, if your walk is not where it needs to be, then money is not going to give it to you. Money can actually distract from it because for a lot of people, when they make money, their dependence on God lessens their dependence on God lessons. And that was one thing that I was, have always been focused on at since Bobby and I really, you know, had our, this beautiful success is to not lessen my dependence on God. Even when the bank account has a lot of zeros in it, I've had a bank account with hardly any zeros and I have a bank account with a lot of zeros in it, but my dependence on God can't lessen because we're real quick to get to our knees when things are scary or you're in need. But a lot of times for people when they're making a bunch of money, they're like, oh yeah, I'll get back to that. Or right. they think it's them, or they think it's them that, that created that success. And it is you because God gave you the skills 
But remember, God gave you the skills. <laughs> God gave you the skills to do that. So there's just this, it's lordship. It's a, it's a lot of things. And if you're listening, you're like that, none of it, I just don't think it's possible for me. Then, you know, really you need to actually dive into the word and understand your identity because you, you are a daughter of the King. Maybe it's not possible today because you need, there are things that you need to learn, but it is possible. Generational curses are possible to be broken. This, this, um, passed down poverty spirit can end with your generation, with how your relationship with the Lord is, whether you make a million dollars or a hundred thousand dollars or $50,000, you can break that uh, poverty, that generational curse of poverty, because it's, it's here. It's a mentality and it's a belief system that, um, that God does not want you to have. And you know, I know Molly, one of the reasons that you wanted to do this podcast is because I, I really like, I, I don't ever talk about, you know, how much money we've made and all of that, because I, I want people to see something else, but, but we, we both realize I, and I'm realizing it more than more and more that by not talking about it, um, it is, it is lessening people's potential to have the hope that it's a possible for them. So that's the only, that's the main thing for me. Like it's possible for you 110%, anything, anything is possible for you. If you are willing to, um, like submit your whole heart to the Lord and keep him at the center and then put your head down and do the actual work. It's not this thing that the world, Oh yeah, I manifested this man. I manifested. That is a lie. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Like it is God who gives every good gift. And so yes. if you're willing to submit the whole thing, I, and let me just say this last thing, Molly, I have said this to God many times over my, well, this year, it'll be 49 years on this planet. I've, I've said this to God many times, this thing in my heart, this dream, the thing that burns white hot in your belly and keeps you awake at night and keeps you like almost fantasizing about a future, right? Whatever this dream is, I have handed it over to God more than once. I've said, you know what, God, if this thing is not from you, take it. No matter how much I think that this is the direction I want, if this thing, whatever the, it is, whatever the direction was, whatever the dream was, if it's not from you, I want you to take it because I only want for me what you have designed, what you want for me, not what I want for me. And I believe that it's easy to say that and it's really hard to do it. You've seen the little meme of a little girl and she's standing in front of Jesus and she's, he's like, has his hand up because he's asking her for a teddy bear, but behind his back, he has a giant teddy bear. Right. Have you seen uh -huh. that one? I have. It's kind of this thing where it's a trust factor with the Lord and, you know, we have our own issues that we walk through in life. And we think, we really think we know, we really think we know, I know I was made for this. I know this is what God wants for me. But if you, but if you trust God, then you can say, God, here's this dream. I'm going to give it to you. And if it's what you actually want for me, then I'll walk in it. But I think that that your ability to, to first say, have your way with this thing. Um, I think that's been really instrumental for me and my just success and walk with the Lord. Yeah, that's so beautiful. And really what it comes down to is people have just stopped dreaming. The vision has just gotten so small. And I actually have this conversation with somebody at the gym every morning. We, we go back and forth. We're in two different industries and we talk about vision all day long. And this is something we can definitely expand on, but I think this is a really great kind of like sit and marinate on this as we're wrapping this episode up. He was telling me he was going through this training and this is just so good because again, we, we kind of just suppress our own vision and God doesn't want to be in a container. We put him in a container and God's like, I don't, I'm not designed to be in a container. Like I am the creator. I created you. So when it comes to income specifically, this is so powerful. My brain is still wrapping around all these layers. When you think of the annual income that you want, when you think of the annual income, what does it look like to have that obviously annually? also monthly, weekly, and daily. And when you really set on that, whether that's you know, having a six-figure income annually, a seven-figure income annually, but then you start going down that route, what is your life going to look like when you can do that annually, monthly, weekly, and daily? 
And when I, when he dropped that on me at five o'clock in the morning, I was like, oh my gosh. And you might be thinking the same thing. Like, wow, I, I don't even know how to like handle that. Right. Well, sit down, take time with God and be like, okay, Lord, like, what do you have for me? Because in order to once upon a time, you know, Michelle started as a, you know, it's team mom. That's where she started her story. Right. And then all the way to making multiple seven figures, having a great impact, being a, uh, a radiant biblical leadership expert, gosh, being able to be a founder of an amazing organization has women all around the world just wanting God be the center, you know, and I'm so grateful to be able to know her, but she had to be able to expand her vision and have people come in, breathe life into her, take that time with God, really be able to grow that thing. So when you think of what do you want to create for yourself, What is that going to look like annually, monthly, weekly, daily? Like really take that time because it is going to take time to really expand and stretch. And that's why I love surrounding myself with people that are willing to do that. So that's my question to you, everybody that's listening. Like, are you surrounding yourself with people that are like actively and holding you accountable to stretch? Because a lot of people will just stay in their bubble and the people in their bubble are not stretching. They're staying in there and they're cool with being in there. So I wanted to just add that in there as we wrap this up, because at the end of the day, if you don't have exercises to really stretch your vision and also take that vision, sit down and be like, okay, Lord, what do you have? I can think about what it is my human brain wants, but what do you want for me? And I've done that before. I'm like, okay, here's Molly's goals. But then if you add some, you know, God sauce on there, (laughs) whoa, these got so much bigger and I'm probably still limiting him at the end of the day. I'm just trying to think of something so much bigger outside of my realm that I cannot do by myself. So those are such great, just your story is amazing, Michelle. What you've been able to create is amazing. I think this is going to breathe a lot of like hope and inspiration into people that are probably, you know, sitting in dark places and just not sure like what's next. So I just appreciate you opening up because this is, you are a great example of a person of like, look, when you have God at the center, you work hard, you trust God at the results. You know, you're able to live a life where you can wake up whenever you want, do whatever you want, live life how you want have the money you want, all of it. So um, anything else you'd love to leave us with before we wrap this up today? Um, I, I just want to say one thing. And I remembered what the other podcast was that we were talking about that we wanted to do together. Um, you know, the direct selling network marketing world gets a bad rap and for a good reason. I mean, there are a lot of good reasons that it gets a, a that it gets a bad rap. Um, but you could say that about you know, working in the stock market, you could say that about re- real estate, retail, owning. I mean, you could say that about anything. It's e- I think network marketing becomes an easy one because um, it's kind of an easy target. But but I just want to say this to you: um, I have heard many. I I have heard many people because of their own whatever, either experience or opinion that somebody else gave them, um, shoot down somebody's dream. But just, just because they feel like, oh, I think I'm going to do this. Oh, why would you do that? Blah, blah, blah. Um, I would just say this, like, be careful, be careful what you're speaking to other people about their dream. And Molly is absolutely right. We need to be around other dreamers. Um, most people's dreamer is broken. You can get it back. God gave you this incredible imagination Um, There are some really powerful imagination exercises that you can do with the Lord to kind of get your dreamer back going. Um, A great book is called The Dream Giver by Bruce Wilkinson. I love that book. I read it at least once a year. And I would just say, submit everything to get, have open-handedly take everything in your heart, your biggest, craziest dream and hand it over to the Lord and say, God, if, if this is not what you want for me, take it and fill me up with the new dream. And I promise you, he will do that. So beautiful. I love that. Well, we are just so grateful that you ladies, or even guys, if you're listening to uh, stop by to listen to this episode, because at the end of the day, this is going to set people free. Having Michelle share this, I bothered her for a minute, a hot minute being like, we're going to do this. She's like, ah, you know, I'm like, come on, you know, you know. And it's like, she wanted to make sure it came out of the right heart posture. Michelle, I think you did an excellent job because you're just so well-spoken and everything you do comes out of a good heart posture and God's always the center. So Thank you so much for sharing this part of your story today. This was absolutely beautiful. Thanks, Molly. 